So the first thing I'm going to do there to get set up for Farah is to thread my second color. So this goes into the yarn feeder at the bottom, but it doesn't go in the same place. And it follows the same path that the purple yarn has followed, but on the opposite side. So I'm going through the hole here, pulling this one down and going through there. And then into this last hole here. And it's feeding off the cone at the bottom there. And I'm gonna pop it into the yarn clip because I don't need it right this second. I've got some other stuff that I need to set up first. My instruction book says to leave the carriage on the left hand side before setting up for ferrule. So I'm going to do that now or else I will forget. So that's the stocking net stitch still. Now I'm going to put my punch card in. So I've got my punch card here. It's the one that I showed you previously that I had decided on. And I'm going to put it into the feeder and just use the dial to dial it down starting at row number one and then I'm going to use my little clips that came with the machine little black little bright green clips nice and easy to find and I'll have to dial through more of the card in order to clip it up but then I'm going to put it back into position I'm going to make these meet up with their little, they've got two little dots at the side and the other end has as well and that's where you meet them up. A bit fiddly. So get those lined up and then you can get your little clips into there. Oh, really fiddly. <laughs> oh, get there. Oh dear, it's come out. All right, let's try that again. Okay. That's one side clipped. Other side clipped. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And if you're not sure why I'm doing this, it's to make the card continuous because once it gets to the end of the card, unless you make it roll round again in the feeder, it's just going to feed right out. But doing this is going to continue to roll around. So you get a continuous pattern for as long as you want it. Very, very handy. All right, so now I need to dial back to row one. And if you've installed the clips properly, you'll have no worries. They'll just feed right through and in a continuous loop the whole time. And so you want to make sure that when you're setting up your punch card feeder that it's not set, the little lever here is not set to the stop sign, which is the circle, it should be set to the arrow, which means it's going to feed around. If at any time you want to stop knitting whatever pattern you're knitting and you want to do some stockinette stitch, like some plain stitch or something, then you can just set that lever to stop and the card won't go anymore. So you see I can't move it with the dial, but I definitely want it to move. So I'm setting it onto the arrow now I need to set up my carriage according to the instructions in the book for knitting Fair Isle. Here's the carriage. You can see it's still on stocking net. It's still on the same tension. There are a few things I have to change. So it's important to look at your instruction booklet for this because it's going to be different for different machines. Just slightly different, but the same kind of idea, I guess. So I need to set my rustle levers to the two strokes instead of the one that's on either side. I need to set my dial to knit in instead of stocking net. So I'm going to do that and make sure that I've clicked onto it properly, not like before when I didn't click onto it properly. And that was a problem. 
Um, my side levers, so I've got one at the side here and one at the side here. They should be on the triangle shape, but they are already, so that's not a problem. And then the last thing that I want to change is I want to change the tension a little bit. So I'm going to set it to six and see how it goes. And I'll change the tension if I need to. For the first row of actually knitting Fair Isle, I'm not putting in the new color just yet. I'm going to get to the other side first. And I'm also going to push out the needle that is on the farthest side away from the carriage. So at the moment my carriage is on the left, I'm gonna push out this needle on the right. That helps to maintain the edges because you can get some funky edges with doing ferrule and that just really helps to make a straighter, neater edge. So we'll pop over to the other side. Oh. What on earth happened there? Okay, my entire knitting has come off. Why? I don't know. Well, that was spectacular, was it not? The whole piece of knitting fell off the machine. I don't know why. Um, that has happened to me before. It hasn't happened to me for a while. It's possible that I set something incorrectly. I don't know. Uh, this is the thing that frustrates me and stops me going forward with the knitting machine is when mistakes happen, I usually don't know why, what the problem is. But I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to go right back to the start with my E-wrap cast on. I'm going to do everything that I just showed you at the start. And when I get to knitting my fair isle, I'm going to be really double checking all the settings, making sure that I'm good to go. So I'll meet you back here in a little while. I thought it was really important that I share that with you because I could have just edited that part out and then gone back and started again and showed you from, you know, where it all started working perfectly. But I'm very much a student on the knitting machine journey. And, and I'm sure that so many of you have had similar frustrations or you will come to those frustrations. Eventually I'm going to figure out all the things that I do wrong and why mistakes happen and all of that just like I did with weaving but for now uh, I'm still I'm just not sure. Maybe if you have a knitting machine and you're very proficient at it you might be able to look at what I was doing and tell me why if you did see something that was wrong, please tell me in the comments below so that I can try not to repeat the same mistakes. But yes, I'm going to be super patient. I'm going to go back to the start. I'm going to start again. See you soon. We're back in action. It's happening. This time when I knit from the left to the right, when I got up to that same point that I'd been up to before, nothing happened. It just knit the row quite happily. I'm thinking I really must have neglected to move one of the levers, one of the settings, I did something wrong. I don't know what it was. I still don't know, but I'm sure I did something wrong. So now after a little break and a cup of tea, which always helps very much, pro tip number one, if something's not working for you, take a break and come back to it. I'm gonna thread my next yarn, my second yarn, which is my green. And I'm gonna thread that into the yarn holder in the second part where yarn, it says, two on mine it might say b on yours it's in the second part and basically i'm going to hold on to that because if i let it go it's just going to be pulled up um, away from the yarn feeder so i'm going to hold it for at least the first row of green and i'm also going to push out the last needle as I mentioned before, helps with the edges. Okay, let's see how this goes. I'm gonna take this slowly because it's my first row of green. And yep, it's getting caught a little bit around some of the sinker posts, but that's okay. It's on the other side now, so it's cool. Okay, that went all right, I think. So I'm going to put out the next one before I go back. And the next one. Okay, 
I've got holes. Why have I got holes? I think we're actually good now. I believe that I had the contrast yarn, which is the green yarn. I had it threaded into the wrong spot. I have done ferrule a fair bit on this machine. How I can sp how I could make the mistake of threading the contrast color into the wrong spot, I don't know. But everything seems to be working well now. So I'm just going to basically keep knitting and pushing out that edge needle each time. So once I get to the right hand side, I'm pushing out the left needle. And I'm just going to take it pretty slow for a little while because I've had a couple of mishaps. I just want to make sure that it's all going to keep working nicely. It looks great at the moment. So oh, I'm so thankful. Now I'll push out the right hand side. I'll knit a little bit more and then I will show you what's happening with the pattern. I'm also using my little row counter here. That's just really handy to keep track of how many rows you've done. And then you can record that for next time if you want to make the same thing again. I do feel like I need to move some of my clips a little bit. I might actually take my casting comb off now and just use the clips um, because I have different amounts of tension there from the casting comb to the actual claw combs. So I'll just gently take that off. The knitting does curl up a lot. So you want to make sure that it doesn't curl up underneath the machine and then get caught while you're knitting it. That's happened to me a number of times. It's not all that fun when it happens. You don't always realize that it has happened. Okay, so I'm actually going to put my claw weights down a bit further because my knitting is curling up so much that I feel like it's going to get caught under the machine. I need to wait until there's a little bit more length to it to move my claw weights up. Let's see how many claw weights have I got? I think I should have just enough to do the job here. I'll move some along a little bit so that they're not too far apart. I really want to make sure that's not going to curl up underneath the machine and get caught. So I'm going to move that one down onto the stocking net part. So it's really pulling that stocking net down because that's the part that's really wanting to curl up. Okay, so I'm ready to keep knitting. Make sure nothing's curling up. All good. Loving the purple and green.
You can see the punch card feeding itself through. So when I'm almost ready to change my claw weights, the positioning, that's when I'll stop for a minute and show you what I've got so far. You're supposed to change the claw weights, at least this is what I've read, every 30 to 40 rows, and I've just hit 30 rows. So this is what we've got so far. This is my 36 rows. I think it ended up being about four rows of stocking net, stocking net stitch at the very beginning, which is this purple little band that you can see here. And the rest is the fair isle. And I'm just about to change the claw weights, moving them up a little bit further. It's going really well so far. You'll notice that the long floats are on this side. If you didn't know this about machine knitting, the pattern is actually on the opposite side. So it's a little, you have to be a little bit patient and wait until you have enough knitting that you can kind of curl it around and have a proper look at what the pattern really looks like on the other side. This is why it's really good to be able to make something like a cowl with the fair isle because you can pop all of those floats to the inside of the piece and they don't have to be seen and then they you know don't get snagged on things and all of that so i'm not thinking that this piece is perfect so far but i'm pretty happy that i'm just up and knitting after those couple of uh, false starts i guess we'll call them so i'm going to take these off and move them up You can see here at the edge, probably, what I meant about putting the edge needle out. It gives that much neater, nicer edge. And if you don't put the edge needle out for each row, you end up with like incomplete floats and it just looks quite messy. So we're nearly, nearly there. The new claw weights that I have, you can see which ones are new because they're shiny and white. They sort of age over time. The plastic turns uh, a sort of yellowish color. But also the claws are not as nice and, and shiny and new. So they don't go into the knitting as much. So I'd really like to buy some more new ones, I think. And by the way, if you're worried about putting these spikes through your knitting, it has no detrimental effects whatsoever. Okay, so now I've moved all my claw weights up. I'm at 36 rows. So at around, you know, around 70 rows, then I will change the position of my claw weights again. I'm just going to move that one up a little bit. But I'm sort of past the stage now where I'm worried about it curling up too much. It is still curling up a bit. I'm still going to keep an eye on it just because it's happened to me before. But I think it'll be okay. So I'm going to keep knitting. Um, I'll speed it up so that you can still see what I'm doing. And then once I've got enough length in it, I'm going to stop and then show you because I can actually curl it around a little bit to show you the pattern. Well, that's a hundred rows already. That went amazingly fast. It's kind of like weaving, like once you've done all the setup, um, sorted out any issues, the weaving actually goes really fast. Well, same with the knitting machine. I'm just taking these off just to show you the underside, well, the correct side of the pattern. Be really careful when you're doing this because if you lift this up right now, it's probably going to come right off the needles. But there is some of the beautiful, beautiful pattern. Oh, it looks so good. You know, I think if I had my time over, I would have swapped the colors so that um, the green was where the purple is but that's okay it's absolutely fine and as i've said before i can just knit another one afterwards if i want to change anything but really pleased with how this is going not sure how many rows i'm going to end up doing at this point um i think probably around 200 
but I'm not quite sure. I haven't made one before, so we'll see. And I'll, of course, I'll let you know what I end up doing. If you're looking for any information that I haven't mentioned in the video or you're not sure where I said it in the video, I'll try and put it underneath in the notes section. Click on show more if you can't see it. And if I've missed anything, if I haven't included anything, let me know if you have questions about the project or whatever, and I will try to answer them underneath. Um, so now I'm back to knitting. This is how much I've done and really happy. It's looking great. So I'll try for a, another hundred or so rows and then see how I feel. Well, I must say this has been quite the adventure. Would you like to see my cowl? Here it is, but it's, as you can see, incomplete. This is a hundred rows that I got up to that I showed you before. I left the knitting for a couple of days. I didn't have time to come back to it. I came back to it today. I started knitting just as I had been when I left it a couple of days ago and the carriage got stuck half the way across the row. Uh, I tried to get the carriage off, I couldn't get it off, and so I forced it a little bit, which I know you're not supposed to do, but it did move, thankfully. And then once I had it moved over to the side, it was completely stuck, it wouldn't move from that position. So I started taking the carriage apart and lifting up the handle and everything to check uh, whether there was any yarn wound around somewhere that it shouldn't be. Everything looked completely normal, but the carriage was still stuck. So I put everything back together. And once I put everything back together, I went to move the carriage and it moved like it was just cutting through butter. So again, something happened that, um, I don't know why it happened. So then I, I re-threaded everything and I started to knit and on my first row, this just dropped to the floor, which is not something that anyone wants to see. Um, and I really did my best. I tried to get these tiny little stitches and get them back on the needles. You can see here how small the stitches are with this pretty fine yarn. And yeah, I just couldn't get the stitches back on because they're so fine that it's hard for me to see them. And with the, also with the ferrule floats, that was a little bit confusing as to what was a stitch and what was a float. Hopefully these are things that I will learn over time. So where are we at now? Well, I recast the whole thing, started again. I didn't unravel this because I want to keep this um, as a bit of a reminder, a reminder of what, I don't know, but it's, it's nice anyway to keep. And I don't want to unravel all of this yarn now. That's quite a bit of yarn. And so I've started re-knitting. The good news is that I'm almost pro-level E-wrap cast on now that I can do it so fast because I've done it so many times on this project. And it actually didn't take me that long to get to 100 rows this time because I wasn't filming any of it. So now that I'm at 100 rows, I think I said to you I wanted to do around 200 and then see if I felt that that was long enough. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do from this point on. I have stopped at the 100 rows, so hopefully when I start again, I won't have any of the same problems. The carriage randomly and inexplicably sticking um, halfway through the row. Hopefully it'll be a bit more plain sailing this time. One thing that I have done this time around is um, I mentioned that if I had my time again, I would have reversed the colors so that the green was where the purple is and the purple is where the green is. That's what I've done with this next cow um, to see how that looks and just for a little bit of variation because I worked on this one for a while and restarting, I just felt like doing something a little bit fresh. So I'm going to knit the remaining 100 rows and then we'll have a look at what I'm going to do next.